Hello again, AP Calc BC students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and this is our third video of a total of five in our Logistic Differential Equations series, which is only a BC topic, which is why this is an AP Calc BC video. And really, this is the first video that I, I guess addresses the problems that I have in my guided notes that I use for my students. And if you want access to that particular packet and you're watching this video, whether you're a teacher or a student, you can check out the description below and you can have access to both the uh, actual notes and the solutions to those particular notes. So in this video, I'm going to take care of our first two examples. And I hope that you had a chance to watch uh, one or possibly both of my introduction videos. And if you haven't, check them out. I go through a zombie infestation scenario that kind of depicts about you know, really what the logistic differential of curve is all about in its solution. And then in the second video, I actually go through a very interactive proof of the solution to a logistic differential equation. Neither of those is important in terms of preparing yourself for the advanced placement exam and the types of questions you'll see, but they can certainly put this differential equation into a little bit better focus. The two problems that you're going to see here are very AP-like, and you could very possibly see questions like this. So what I've got, first of all, is a recap of both the logistic differential equation uh, uh, in its differential form, as we see up there, dy over dt equal k times y, quantity 1 minus y over l. And then just above in blue, I have the solution to that differential equation form. Now, as I explained in the video uh, detailing the proof, you will never, ever, ever have to prove how to get from the orange box to the blue box on the AP exam. But it will be very important that you memorize both forms. Because if you've got those forms locked in and you understand what each of their individual components mean, like the L and the K and, and the B, then you will have a very difficult time missing a question on the BC exam because they're going to just uh, really uh, isolate in on those specific values and their meanings. A uh, couple of notes here. In either form, L, as we said before, represents the carrying capacity. That would be the upper limit of a logistic growth, the highest value that your Y or P or whatever your dependent variable can take on. And then it might be worth mentioning, we may not use it uh, necessarily in either of the examples in this video, but in the next video, we certainly will. A logistic growth curve increases the fastest when the curve reaches half of its carrying capacity. Just something that's worth noting. You're not going to use that in example one or two. So let's go ahead and take a look at our example number one. We got the differential equation of a logistic growth model given by dy dt equal k times y1 minus y over l. Well, we got very lucky in this particular problem. The formula was given to us. And it has a solution of y equal l over 1 plus what I affectionately call Becht. Find the solution to the differential growth model for the differential equation specific dy dt equal 2y quantity 10 minus y with the initial condition y of 0 is equal to 1. Well, again, I don't want you to have to walk through the entire process of solving this differential equation because it involves partial fraction decomposition. It's kind of messy. It's something that if you're really good at that integration technique, you probably can pull this off. But it turns out that there's a bit of an easier way. And that way comes from just recognizing that this differential form right here, I'm going to highlight it in yellow, really needs to look like this differential equation form up here in yellow. They are essentially the same thing. They're both the logistic differential equation form. But the one that we have up here is a little bit more specific in that it starts with a 1 inside of those parentheses. So, so that's the very first thing that you want to tackle. And so you look at this guy and think, well, what's causing it to not look like that guy up there? And that's the fact that this 10 needs to be a 1. How do you turn a 10 into a 1? Remove the 0. No, factor out the 10. And so that is going to be our very first step. 
So dy over dt is going to take on a different look. If we factor out a 10, the 10 factored out will multiply by the 2 that's already there and give you 20. Then you've got your y, of course. Factoring a 10 out of a 10 is a 1. And maybe the trickiest part of all is what do you get when you factor a 10 out of just plain old y? Well, you're essentially going to divide that y by 10 makes perfect sense, right? If you multiply the 10 back through, the 10 cancels. And if you want to double check this, just simply distribute. Very quickly, take 20y minus 1 and see if you would still get 20y, right? 20y times 1. And then 2y times negative y, uh, run through that model and see if uh, that would give you uh, negative 2y squared, of course. And then 20y times negative y over 10 is also going to be negative 2y squared. So we know we have an equivalency here. Now, you guys, this is huge because you have just found two of the three elements that you need in your solution to the differential equation. What elements are those, you might ask? Well, let's highlight them. The things that are going to be very important are to find the L, the B, and the K. Because after all, those are the only three things that truly take on constant values, right? T is going to stay as the independent variable, and E is already the constant number E, and so it will never take on any different appearance. And so as you can see, the L is going to manifest itself as the denominator of that dependent variable. So our L is going to be 10. We know that. What else do we know? Well, out in front, we have this k. That's what's multiplied by y. And we see that our k here out in front is this 20. So we are really 2 thirds of the way done. Maybe we get lucky and we look at the, the answer choices and see which ones have that particular uh, 10 on top. Well, um, I can probably get rid of this guy. He doesn't have the 10 on top. Well, I also need to make sure that I have this 20 value uh, as the uh, power of my e, e to the negative 20 power. And I see that I've got two of those. Now, I know that you have a 20 right here, but he's the wrong sign. Remember in our last video, we mentioned that the exponent of the e resting in that denominator for logistic growth will be negative. And since my k is a positive 20, that negative needs to stay there in that denominator as the exponent to ensure that I have growth, right? e to the negative power in the numerator is certainly going to be decay, okay? So now it's just a matter of finding out what b is. And it looks like b is either going to be a 9 or a negative 9. And so we're going to have to go through that process to determine. How do we do that, you might ask? Well, we simply look back at the logistic differential equation solution and we implement our initial condition because you'd think, well, we've got to use it at some point. And what that initial condition just says is that that point would lie on our curve. It would satisfy the equation of our curve. And so for y, we will use 1 because that is the y value. And for the t, we'll use 0. Now, as we do that, let's not forget, we know the value of L, and we know the value of our K. Now, the K is not going to stick around very long, because if we have negative K, which is negative 20, multiplied by our 0, we're just going to get a 0 up there anyway, right? And so we know that um, that is going to uh, give us a situation where, uh, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, let's let's change this. I forgot my e. B times e to the zero. That's a makes a big difference there. Kind of go back. I have b times e to the negative twenty times zero. So that would be e to the zero. And of course, e to the zero is one. And so if we cross multiply here, one times one plus b is one plus b, of course. And we multiply the denominator of this one, which can be a 1 as well, times the 10. We have 10. And then we find out that b is going to be positive 9 when we subtract the 1 over. And therefore, the only one of these four solutions or two remaining 
that hold the consistent L, K, and V would be that one. Now, once you get really comfortable with this process, you're going to very innately know that you find L and K immediately by recognition, and then you just plug in to find V, and you'll be able to solve these much, much faster this way than trying to separate and integrate and using partial fraction decomposition and all that. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next example here on the following page. And I'm going to move me over here to the side. And now we have a, a question that asks or presents a model saying that the number of phytoplankton specimens in a laboratory tank at time t is increasing according to the logistic growth model. Which of the following statements would be true? And so really you've got four different equations, some of which are solution equations, one of which is at least a differential equation, one's a second derivative, and I guess one is like a, an integral setup. So you have four very different things, but only one of them would be true according to this situation. Now you can see over here I've uh, uh, recopied our logistic differential form and its a, equation, its solution form. As you can see, this problem would not provide those equations initially, so we'd have to understand that. And so we just start looking at each one and see if we can find out if something is wrong with it. So we look at choice A, and boy, choice A looks pretty darn close to the logistic growth equation form. But there's one thing that's wrong with it. And it's very subtle. This exponent of E is a positive value. And remember what we said, if you have E to a positive exponent in the denominator, that's actually going to be decay because that's an E to a negative exponent if it were moved into the numerator. And so very subtly, we can eliminate A as a possibility. Now, if you look at part B, that's not a logistic differential equation form at all. In fact, that would be your uninhibited growth, your y, yeah, dy dt equal k times y, the form that produces what we call in my classroom kect. That would be a form that probably has growth that looks like this forever and ever and ever. All right, and that is not logistic. So we can get rid of him. And then using that same idea, Looking at part C, it uses an idea that harkens back to unit five in the course and exam description from AP Calculus. The second derivative of P with respect to time is positive for all T. Well, we have to translate that phrase into, or that, I guess, expression into the phrase concave up. A second derivative that's positive is always concave up, which looks exactly like the curve that I just drew that depicts B. And we know that that can't be true because a logistic growth curve might do that for a while. It reaches this point where it's increasing the fastest and then it slows down, right? We've got this inflection point that means something that we're going to talk about in the next video. And so we go from concave up to concave down. And so C can't be true, which obviously means D is the right answer, but I'd like to take a look and verify why is D the correct answer. And it's simply because this would be the first step that one would embark upon if they were going to prove the solution to the differential equation. And this is where maybe watching my PowerPoint presentation in video introduction number two to 7.9 could be a little helpful. But basically, it's taking this differential equation, and it's dividing 1 minus p over l over, and then it's manipulating that just a little bit algebraically, cleaning it up so that we can embark upon a partial fraction decomposition usage. So if you're a little confused about, OK, I see that d is the only logical answer, but I really don't understand why it is. Make sure you check out that particular video and see that very uh, special step that gets that proof process rolling along. So anyway, I hope this helps a little bit. We've got uh, just a couple of more videos, one that's going to cover my example three and four, two more multiple choice questions. And then I'll close up with video five that will depict a full-blown free response question utilizing the logistic differential equation. Anyway, again, hope this helps. Keep studying your calculus and we'll see you next time.